there is another way to take advantage of poison without eating it. The anemones have such an efficient defense system that no one has ever found a vaccine to counteract its toxins and to live calmly among its tentacles. When a clownfish chooses an anemone, he can't enter it just like that. He would die due to the tens of thousands of micro stings received, and later he would be devoured. This process of immune adaptation is very delicate and somewhat painful. The question is allowing itself to be stung little by little in order to discover the exact composition of the mucus that covers every tentacle of the anemone. This mucus is what prevents the arms from shooting its harpoons between them when they come into contact. The clownfish copy the molecular structure of this protective shield and then reproduce it over their scales. Chemically disguised, they're not identified as a foreign body and the invertebrate doesn't attack them. However, the fish takes care of its home and with great care, which is why they can't be considered an ungrateful guest. The clownfish's protection against predators is impregnable. It's better than an electric fence. Even the best hunters can't beat him. of sea anemones is conceived for something else. We've insisted on the defensive concept of toxins. And yet, with the passing of time, the mere fact of having them has allowed evolution to discover a new use, the hunt. The truth is, there are very few animals that use toxins for hunting. This is because just possessing poison isn't enough. A system to inject it is also required. Alongside the Almiquias from Cuba and Haiti, shrews are the only animals that use toxins for hunting. No other of the 4,070 mammalian species do so. But evolution is not always progressive, and sometimes it seems to jump along. A casual bite by one of these small animals would be a little dangerous for man, but it could kill a cat or a dog. Today, it's essentially a predator. A shrew that weighs barely four or five grams has to confront insects that are even bigger than it is. Its nutritional needs are enormous. It has to cover a metabolism more appropriate of a hummingbird than of a mammal. More than five hours without food would cause it to die of starvation. That's why its venom contributes to killing its prey without burning large amounts of energy. Each hunt needs to be very worthwhile. The other black stain on her record is due to her supposed cannibal conduct with respect to male spiders. Her sinister name is because of them, although this is just another exaggeration.
The chaotic web that they build does not seem to make any geometric sense. Their specialty is poison. They don't need anything else. And obviously, it's enough for them. We've left snakes for the end, since they best represent this kind of hunter. And yet the percentage of snakes that kill their prey by injecting them with poison is less than 10%. For the most part, snakes are constrictors. However, there are some that are extremely dangerous for man, and thousands of mortal accidents occur annually. Much research has been carried out in order to achieve each antidote. And it's been discovered that snake venom originally had a pre-digestive function. Almost 75% of its composition is made up of enzymes. And it's so strong that the neurotoxin and hematoxin effects became its prime function. The prey die due to respiratory failure. Thanks to the knowledge acquired from research, Today, snake venoms are the source of new medicines for many illnesses. Cardiopathy, thrombosis, hypertension, Parkinson's disease, polio, rheumatism, epilepsy, arthritis, botulism, leishmanosis, cancer. The truth is, we shouldn't dislike snakes so much. As we've seen, toxins have different effects on different species. What may kill in some cases, cures in others. What may be lethal for some, is the perfect diet for others. It's difficult for nature to reveal its secrets, but it's quite clear that it holds stories that are a trip for those who want to watch without using hallucinogens.